We only had a few minutes, and we had to make them count. My girlfriend, Sophie, had really overprotective parents. Despite about to start college, they still forbid her from having a boyfriend, so we had to keep our relationship secret. For the most part, it was fine. We still hung out, but we didn't get much private time, if you know what I mean. When her parents went away for a weekend, we decided to get as much private time as we could at her place. However, the day before they were due to get back, the unthinkable happened, Sophie's parents came home early. There weren't any easy escape routes from her bedroom, so I was stuck. It wasn't made any easier by the fact that I'd stupidly left my sneakers by the front door, so her parents knew there was someone else in the house. What do we do? Sophie thought for a moment before rushing to her dresser. Quick, put these on. Sophie tossed a bundle of clothes at me. I unfurled it to find a bra, panties, a frilly blue dress, similar to the pink one Sophie was wearing. Sophie, you'd better not have a boy in there. Her parents were still downstairs, and there were precious few options left. I could either face her angry parents or do what Sophie wanted. Joe, if my dad finds you up here, he'll kill both of us. I glanced at the clothes Sophie had thrown at me, then back at the door. There was no way I could make it out of there without being caught. So, with a sigh, I reluctantly started putting on the cute outfit she had given me. As I struggled into the dress, Sophie stifled a giggle, clearly finding the situation more amusing than I did. You look gorgeous honey, but it's our only chance, she whispered. Her parents were getting closer to her room, their voices growing louder. I hastily slipped into the bra and panties, feeling incredibly self-conscious and awkward. I hoped Sophie's parents would just assume I was some lost, confused girl who had accidentally wandered into their house. Sophie helped me fix my hair and makeup in a hurry. I looked at my reflection in the mirror and had to admit that, despite feeling out of place, I did make a convincing girl. It was a strange mix of emotions, embarrassment, fear, and a hint of amusement at the absurdity of the situation. I could hear her dad's heavy footsteps just outside the door. My heart raced as I braced myself for the confrontation. Sophie gave me a reassuring look and whispered, just play along. The door swung open, revealing Sophie's stern-faced father. He took one look at me, dressed in Sophie's clothes, and his expression shifted from anger to utter confusion. Who's this? He demanded, his gaze darting between us. I tried to speak in the highest, most feminine voice I could muster. Oh, I'm, um, a friend of Sophie's. I got lost, and she was kind enough to let me wait in her room. Sophie nodded, doing her best to act surprised. Yeah, Dad, she just showed up, and I didn't know what to do. I thought it would be safer for her to wait in here. Her father's eyes narrowed, still skeptical but slightly less angry. All right, just don't let strangers into the house, especially when we're not home. You know better. We both nodded, relieved that he was buying our story. After a few more stern warnings, he finally left the room, leaving us to catch our breath. Sophie and I couldn't help but burst into quiet laughter, our hearts still racing. It was a close call, and we realized just how far we'd go to keep our relationship a secret. After that close encounter with Sophie's dad, we couldn't help but find humor in the situation. It became our little secret, a shared inside joke that made our bond even stronger. Over time, I realized that dressing up as a girl while visiting Sophie wasn't just a one-time solution, it had its advantages. Gradually, I started doing it more often. It became a kind of tradition, a unique aspect of our relationship. Sophie and I would spend hours perfecting my, girl, look, experimenting with different outfits, hairstyles, and makeup. She would teach me how to walk and talk more femininely, so I could pass as a friend of the family. As I visited her house regularly, her parents became accustomed to my presence as a girlfriend. They got to know me better in this persona, and I started to engage in conversations with them that I wouldn't have as myself. Sophie's mom would often chat with me about fashion and makeup, and her dad, still a bit bewildered by the situation, treated me like a young lady, which felt oddly endearing. We built a unique friendship under the guise of my female alter ego.
Sophie's parents even began to like having me around, thinking of me as a trustworthy friend. In some ways, it allowed me to get closer to her family than I ever would have as her boyfriend. We shared more stories, laughs, and meals together, creating a peculiar but genuine connection. Sometimes, when we needed a little extra privacy or just wanted to have a laugh, I would put on the girl persona and join Sophie for a family gathering. It was a delightful and humorous secret that only she and I shared. And with time, our relationship evolved into something stronger and more profound, as we continued to navigate the delicate balance between our secret love and the peculiar friendship I had with her family.